filming you filming me. Hey, how's it going? It's Carl, aka Carl Drum Tech, and uh, today we're here in Torrance, California. And the man behind me needs no introduction, but in case you do need it, his name is Wei Yuan Pan. What's up, guys? Uh, my really good friend and um, you know close coworker, I guess, for what we do here with the um, social media. And today we want to talk about something that's really cool. Um, Wei created a new product called the Marching Percussion Playbook. And uh, if you guys didn't know anything about it, why don't we have Wei talk more about the Marching Percussion Playbook? Yeah. So Carl, thanks for having me on. First off, good to see everyone all the uh, AKA Carl Drum Tech fans out there. Um, but the new book that I've been spending about the last four or five months writing now has been a collection of all the handouts and questions and you know all the information that I've been getting online over the last year and a half or so. You know, Some requests too, right? As far as like stuff that they want more explanations of, right? Absolutely, because I was doing live streaming lessons on Periscope and with every scope session, I would get more questions, uh, not only during the sessions, but afterwards through direct messages and things like that that I could answer in one 30 or one hour, 30 minute or one hour video lesson. So uh, compiled all those questions and for the first time ever compiled all the exercises that I use to teach those concepts and also the in-depth explanation. That's probably the part that took the longest to write because you know it's everything, a lot of things that you know when you're teaching, you tell students in passing or you have an anecdote, so mm. think of it like this and do this. Right. And so put it all into one book right. for the first time. So that's been a passion project of mine for the last, three, four, five months now. Where did you develop the, uh, I guess, the inspiration to create some of the exercises in the booklet? I mean, do you just draw from your experiences with, you know, if you guys didn't know, uh, Way, Way Marsh Cavaliers, um, you know, and obviously you came from the um, the Houston music uh, departments and things like that, right? Yep. You're a product of that. Yep. And so just wondering, where did you come up with the inspiration for all of these exercises that you came up with? Well, as a student, as a teacher, you're, kind of a, an amalgamation of all the other players and teachers you've ever been around, right? So a lot of these exercises are just stock exercises that I learned when I was in high school or in college. And, you know, having been someone that's gone through the process of being a student, a player, a member, and then a teacher of those people who are students and teachers and members and things like that, you find which exercises work best, right? Because as a teacher, uh, the, the analogy I give my students is, you're the patient and we're the doctors, right? You show yep. up to the doctor's office and the doctor looks at you and kind of diagnoses what your issues are and then prescribes you these exercises and then you have to go home and take your medication and you come back and the doctor says, okay, well this is better or this is work worse, this worked, this didn't work. And so over the years of just playing and teaching, you find which exercises are the most effective. Right. Uh, and so it's a combination of exercises that I've learned over the year, but it's also a combination of exercises that I've you know, created or tailored for students. You know, when you teach a bunch of students, you see this issue and you could give them this or this or this or this. And as teachers, a lot of times we'll create custom exercises for students. And so over the years, I've discovered some exercises that work really well and uh, for the first time wrote them down. But I think the most powerful thing is that they're all uh, compiled into one location, into one book. Right. Yeah, I actually have it. Talk for a second, Carl, and I'll Oh, out. nice. So, um, and I think the really cool thing about, you know, having a product like the Marching Progression Playbook is the fact that, you know, back when I was marching, there wasn't a lot of these resources around. I mean, sure, you can go to like a music store and you have these resources in these books, but you know, it's so easy now, like online, like you know, you like you, you meet these influencers like Way, like myself, and you know, if you happen to put out some kind of product like this, there it is. Like you can just buy it online, you have it within seconds. So that's the really cool thing about it. Yeah, but the, with the, the technology we have now, it's not just a physical product, which is, you know, this is the physical product that once I finished writing everything, I put it together, uh, and I'm going through this like proofing stage now, because you're always refining and making things better. But these are all available as digital downloads right now, which, you know, as of a year or two years ago, I didn't 
know how to do, mm -hmm. but through the process you learn how to create the, the products, you put them online, so you can just click, download, boom, 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 and then like Carl said, within seconds, you have access to these materials. Right. Uh, so it's made up of five volumes, it's volumes one through five, and uh, each volume covers a specific skill set, right? And the thing that maybe is different about this book than other books is, you know, most method books they'll start you from point A, like this is how you hold the stick, this is how you set up, and this book is designed for people who uh, maybe have that information already. Some basic knowledge. Yeah, basic. They've got basic knowledge, right? They're already playing. Yeah. But one of the most common questions I got from students through direct messages, and maybe you get this all the time through Carl, is like, it's like, what should I be practicing? I practice a lot, but I don't know uh, yes. what to be working on. Or <laughs> I, I sure do. I don't know what I should be playing to get better at rolls or to get better at um, axe and tap or things like that. And so you choose the volume that you are working on. So, for example, the, uh, the first volume is 421. And the reason I started with 421 is that's a very simple framework that we've all used at some Essential. point. But you can use that with any exercise that you already have and already know. But in this volume, I expanded to some additional materials on how you might use 421 beyond just fours, twos, twice, ones, four times, right? right. There's some other combinations of how you can tailor it for show excerpts and things like that. Um, the second volume, timing is everything. It's a whole volume dedicated to just time exercises. And not just, you know, like one e and one and uh, one e uh, and e and but then you have two note timing, mm -hmm. one note timing. So important for bass drummers, uh, oh, but yeah. also for snare drummers and tenor players. Like you ha and front ensemble players, you have to have a solid foundation when it comes to timing. And not just duple timing, but also triple timing, right? Triplet right. or compound timing. Uh, third volume is all about the diddle rudiments, because mm. again, the question that we hear most often is, how do I make my paradiddles better? How do I play paradiddle diddles faster? You know, what are the breakdowns that I should be working on? So it's an entire volume dedicated to the diddle rudiments. Fourth one is all about rolls. Ooh. Rolls, right? Because uh, if you've ever taken an individual audition, you know that you go in there and they say, okay, play eights, okay, play stick control or double beat, play axe and tap, and then, okay, play chicken and a roll or play triplet diddle, some roll exercise, and immediately that is often a drop-off point for students. Oh, yeah. They're rocking on all this other stuff, and then you say, hey, play a roll, and then maybe it sounds, you know, the roll quality is the, 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 Yeah, it's choked off. And I think, like, rolls are probably one of the hardest things to learn, especially for a beginner. Like, when you first start learning it, I mean, as teachers, we can give them all the information in the world, but it's like, unless you have the right muscle groups and correct dexterity, yep. you're not going to be able to play a good role. Yep, absolutely. And it takes time, too. It's not going to happen overnight. And so, you you know, in this chapter, like I said, all these chapters have in-depth explanations on uh, what I would tell a student in a private lesson. So, you know, what I tell people, like, this is the closest thing to having me as your drum tech or as your private lesson instructor that you're going to get when it comes to this kind of information. Right. And so it's a whole issue dedicated to not just open double stroke rolls, but also buzz rolls, because those are what I use as the foundation to build up to the double stroke roll. And then the fifth volume, which I just finished a few weeks ago, the final volume, is called, it's all about the inner beats, you know, and... Um, the part that we all neglect. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the inner beats are the, the glue that hold all the accents and other notes together. So uh, with that fifth volume, these are very specific targeted topics that I wanted to cover to answer the questions that I get. Right. For the first time, it's all in, in one book, so. There it is. So it's available as a digital download yep. and as a physical book. Yeah. If you want to find out more information about it, it's all on my website, wayyampan.com. And of course, I will leave a link in the description below. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate of course, that. of course, yeah, you got Thanks, it, man. man. Um, so what is this book targeted to? So we, we talked about how, you know, like, it, it is kind of targeted to people who already have some basic knowledge. Yep. But, you know, is this good for beginners? Is this good for intermediates? Is this good for advanced players? Is it good for instructors? Yeah. So I originally wrote this to just meet the needs of the people who are asking questions. And so those range from high school students uh, who are auditioning for their high school drumline, college students that were getting ready for their college drumline auditions, but maybe also taking indoor or DCI auditions. And then uh, by accident, I started getting a lot of questions from instructors too. Saying like, you know, I have a student who's doing this, they're struggling with this, what would you, well, I would have them play this or I would do this. You know, I've tried this with students in the past, this worked also. And then the next step was I've been using this, I've been piloting these materials with my private lesson students too. And I teach students that range from beginner beginners, like this sure. is week one of how to hold the stick, all the way to the people who are auditioning for world-class indoor and DCI lines. Right. And uh, it's worked with all of them. And, and the thing that's been a huge discovery for me too is that when you plant these uh, seeds early on, yep. I, I'm shocked at how much better they're able to play um, things that maybe would take them a little bit longer.
longer, but you know, like you teach stroke times and you show them how to build up that control of how to rebound the stick. And then when we go to play these concert snare drum tunes, they already understand how to control the rebound of the stick. Right. You know, you know with buzz rolls and things like that. So um, the answer is that it serves, even if you're not a marching percussionist, I would go so far as to say that this will help you in your percussive arts journey regardless of what level you're at and what style or genre you're playing. Excellent. Awesome. That's that's so cool. So like I said, guys, you know, um, it's going to be, I'm going to have a link in the description below so you guys can check that out if you guys are interested. And, um, you know, like, I, like we said, I mean, it's, this is good for every level. So even if you're an instructor, I mean, it's like, you know, the, the, one of the things that, you know, as instructors that we can't let go of is that we're still students yep. and we can learn so much from each other. So if you're an instructor watching this video, if you're a drum tech, I mean, this product is definitely still worth it because you can get different ideas and different concepts about how to teach and you can get that from, you know, the experiences that Way has that are culminated in this material. Yeah. So. And guys, if you do check out the material, please let me know. And if you have any questions about it, don't be afraid to hit me up on social media. You know, I'm very accessible online and uh, you know, I'd love to say thank you for checking out the product, but also, like I said, if you have any questions, you know, that's why we're online doing all this stuff is to help the percussion community. So right. let us know. What do you think, what, what, uh, what do you hope for the impact of this to be? Uh, you know, when I started doing all the social media stuff online, maybe a year plus now, was at first it was just to get on and, and share some of the information that I knew that I've acquired over the years uh, as playing and teaching. Share a little bit here and there. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> but what I've since discovered is that there are a lot of students and teachers out there who maybe don't have access to this kind of information, right? Some maybe students may not even have a drum instructor. Right, they're in, in a town where there isn't a local drum instructor who maybe uh, specializes in this kind of information, or maybe you're the one teacher in town and you don't have other colleagues that you can talk to and share ideas and bounce ideas off of. So the idea is with this book, hopefully it provides access to this kind of information for all sorts of uh, players who are interested in this kind of material. That's a huge impact if we can make money. So, um, yeah, other than that, wait, what, anything new? Like, what are you up to? What's, uh, I see that you have a new drone. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, got a new drone a couple weeks ago and actually it came in over the winter holidays, but I didn't want to open it because I didn't want anything that would distract me from finishing writing this book. <laughs> so this book is hot off the presses as of a few weeks ago. And so just to open the drone a couple weeks ago, I've been learning how to fly this new um, piece of equipment and just having a good time with that. Of course, dad life is, is the uh, focus and the primary goal, but yep. this has been a huge passion project that's finally come to fruition. So Very to, cool. to everyone who has already checked it out, thank you guys so much. It really means a lot to me. Hey, if you guys already have the product, leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Yeah. And let us know what you think. Yeah. So Cool, man. So awesome. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, video blog. My pleasure. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, as always, make sure if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Uh, if, you have any, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave that in the comments below. Any suggestions for types of videos that you want me to cover or way to cover, whatever he's on. Um, and if you have not subscribed yet, what the heck are you guys waiting for? Make sure you subscribe. Make sure to subscribe to Way You Ant Pan as well. Uh, we'll leave um, the uh, opportunity for you guys to subscribe to us in the links below as well. And uh, trying a little editing magic here. Um, if you guys want to watch a classic Carl and Way V Vlog episode, you can click here and uh, you can watch that uh, V Vlog right now. So, um, and uh, if you guys feel like this video can help somebody, Please make sure you share this on all your social media platforms so that we can get the word out so people can see about so people can hear about the march progression playbook get in people's hands and uh help them out especially if they don't have access to this kind of information and this kind of uh assistance all right so cool thank you guys again we'll see you guys next time peace out way bye guys thanks for watching see you next time all right here we go bonus segment uh we're gonna have way teach us an exercise teach us meaning teach me too an exercise straight from the marching percussion playbook. So let's know, learn that together. So one of the variations you can insert into any axe and tap or box exercise that you know is playing a buzz for the first tap after the accent. So let's take bucks forwards for example. And we're gonna replace that first tap with a buzz. And what's the reason for that? Why are we doing that? So, one of the most common things you see students or players do is they drop in that first tap and they kind of, you know, they let it go without thinking about it, right? So by placing a buzz on that first tap, it's deliberate. Yeah, it makes you think like you really have to listen for it. You have to really think about that tap. 
So let's try to go. Sure. Two, ready, and. we're really paying attention to that first buzz. The second thing is you want that buzz to be seco or dry or short. Uh, a lot of times when you're trying to stop the stick, you're doing like a half downstroke, but you really need to get that stick to stay down before you play that buzz. If you rebound up to this like mezzo forte height and then you try to play buzz, you'll hear a long buzz. So this is an auditory cue for you to say like, hey, you really are getting a downstroke before you play that. Got yeah. it. Yeah. So let's try like twice now. Yeah. One, two. Merely making sure that you're getting a downstroke. Listening for that seco buzz. I don't know about you guys, but I've never done this before, so I'm kind of struggling. <laughs> yeah, and you can, you can, I mean, and when you first start doing it, you're gonna feel these, you know, different hand pressures in your hand, but it also, also helps you kind of control the signal there and hold on the signal. You can also do the same thing. This is where it gets a little more complicated because right now the stroke types are down, buzz, tap, up. Right now, we could also do this in a bucks threes format, which would look like this. Right. There you go. Ah. And you can also do it with bucks twos. Bucks sure. twos. Struggling. Yeah. Uh, well, and that's normal when you first do this first time. And the timing and the motion of this should look just as if you're playing it without the, the buzz. And what will happen now is we go back to just regular box twos. You really, you know, you have a new awareness for that first tap. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. So try it out. Try it out. See what you guys think. Oh,